Today we're doing a stroll in the southern end of town down Jalan Danao Poso. We're starting off here at the roundabout and I'll show you some of the streets here. This is Jalan Danao Tumblingan. The one across the road is Jalan Kusumasari. It goes down to the beach. That one's Jalan Chamara. I've already reviewed that one in the past. And today we're heading down there, which is Jalan Danao Poso. Jalan Danao Poso is about one and a half kilometers long. And we're gonna walk from the roundabout right up to where it meets the bypass. And we'll stop along the way, check out a few hotels and restaurants. And there's plenty of bars down here as well, which should interest those of you who like a cheap beer. The first popular spot we get to is called Fire Station. It's like a bit of a pub where they'll do burgers, steaks, seafood, and beers and cocktails. They have a happy hour between four and six, and it's an extremely popular place. They also do a Sunday roast, which I've heard is very good. And they recommend booking for it because it's so popular. About 100 meters further up on the right, there are three bars that are incredibly popular. They start off at about midday getting people in there. One of them's called Place to Be. The next one's called Up to You. And the third one is called No Name Bar. And right next to those three bars, there is a Masakan Padang restaurant. I haven't tried it out, but it gets pretty good reviews on Google. So if you're into your local Indonesian food and uh, Padang style food, that might be a place to try it as well. Another 30 meters down on the right is Warung Kopi Bali Bineka Muda. Now, Bineka Muda is really a fantastic coffee shop. They do old school coffee, well, it's actually modern coffee in an old school cup. They do fantastic Indonesian food that's really quite modern. And it's actually quite, quite popular with Indonesians rather than foreigners, but I think it's the perfect blend between that Western and uh, Indonesian style cafe. Um, and the food is just fantastic. It's actually one of my top picks down on this road. And we've arrived at Island Grocer, which is a further 30 metres up the road on the left. Again, one of my favourite coffees in all of Sanua. Fantastic blend they have here. Cafe itself, I don't go to that much because I don't get a, a hearty breakfast there normally. They do great pastries and they do great coffees. So if you need your coffee fix and you're down this end of town, one of my favourites, Island Grocer. Small little spot as well. Inside Island Grocer, they've also got a little uh, grocery store in there that sells sort of artisan little snacks and things like jams, granola, nuts, bags of coffee. And it's really good. And if you're looking for something to bring home to your home country after you leave Bali, there's some really good quality snacks there that you could bring home to your work colleagues or friends and family. So straight across the road from Island Grocer is Betty Bake. Now, those of you who have been around Sanua for a while might have heard of this name before. It's actually opened again after it closed down earlier and it's getting rave reviews again. I'm actually tempted to go and try it right now. And then across the road again from Betty Bake is Pizza and Go. Some people say Pizza and Goo and some people say Pizza Good. I used to say Pizza Good in the, in the old days. It looks like Pizza Good. Here it is. <laughs> These dudes love the beeping. Anyway, that um, that pizza is the one that I always have if I'm doing a takeaway pizza. I'll always go pizza and go. Uh, it doesn't mean it's the best, but I think it's a very good one. It's just my preferred one, but I think in Sanua there are so many good pizzas uh, and everyone's gonna have their preferences that the, the margin of difference between the best and the, and the second best is almost nothing. And another 30 metres along the road on the right, you get to these two bars. These two bars are incredibly popular. They are Stumpy's and my bar. Those two start filling up at around two o'clock on most days. You'll start seeing people sort of congregate there and start uh, putting back some beers. And as the night wears on, of course, it gets a little bit messier, a little bit rowdier. Nothing over the top, like pretty uh, pretty chilled actually. Most of the bars along here are pretty chilled. So if you're a visitor in town and you just want to sort of hang out in a bar, come to one of these places and strike up a conversation. People are pretty friendly around here. And that brings us to Jalan Sudamala, 
So down there, that's Jalan Suramala, and we're still on Poso. So across the road is, there's a Masakan Padang restaurant there. That Masakan Padang restaurant, Sari Bundo Jaya, has good ratings as well. Masakan Padang literally means cooking from Padang. The city of Padang is in West Sumatra, and the people from Padang have spread all across Indonesia, spreading their food, and it's amazing food. You'll see in the windows, they'll usually have these plates stacked up uh, upside down, uh, and then the normal way with food piled in the window, they'll cook it uh, usually the night before. Uh, so when you have it, it's not warm. But it's a great meal to have, and if you are into Indonesian food in a serious way, you should try Masakan Padang at some place. So that, that would be a place to try. Next door is a Java food restaurant. And it is Warung Jawa Moro Senang Buslamet. The first review I ever did, or well, first, first video I ever uploaded was actually of that place. A fantastic Warung. Very local. And it's one of those places where you can go and pick all your, your dishes and make your own nasi champur. The prices are unreal. Flavour is through the roof. And it's one of the best value for money places you can go in all of Sonoa. One of the cheapest meals you're going to get. And if you're on a real budget, let's say you've got no cash at all, you just get a plate of rice and a couple of veggies, it's going to cost you less than 10000 Unreal value. And this is Warung Babi Guling Kanya. I've been here before. Actually got shouted a meal there from uh, one of my loyal viewers, Mike D. Thanks for that, Mike. Also, Neil, thanks for coming along. That's a nice Bubby Gooling, a really good Bubby Gooling. They do beers there as well. You know, you have a few beers there and a, a, a plate of pork and you'll get away with oh, less than 100,000 a person. It's pretty good value. And a little bit further up the road, we reach the Sonora Paddle Club, which is an interesting little concept. It's where you can play paddle. Uh, I'm not really sure what it is. It's something like tennis, but like on a mini scale. Um, Susan's been wanting to try it, and we're trying to get a couple of friends together to go, and we've got to apparently play in doubles, so we want to get four people together and have a go at that at some point. If I get a chance anytime soon, I'll film it. I'm not sure I'm going to have the chance, but if you're into like racket sports, have a look at that place, because I think it's a really, really interesting proposition. I know that's not going to be of interest to most people, uh, but across the road from the Paddle Club, just there in that little uh, row of shops, next to the Telcom, sh uh, telcom Cell Shop and next to that Sushi Tao, there is a, a key cutting place. They'll do duplicate keys. They'll uh, make you a new key if you've lost your, your, your original one. And they're pretty cheap. I went over there to get a couple of key cuts, the keys cut pretty recently. Cheap as, like, I don't know, 20,000 or something like that. And that brings us to Seoul in a bowl. Over there. They're pretty sure it's related to that Seoul on the beach up near Pantai Sindul there. Big building. Hasn't been open for that long, I, I don't think. And exactly across the road from Seoul in a bowl is Di Matina. Pretty expensive coffee shop, that one. I mean, it's not just a coffee shop. It's like a big restaurant. They do good coffees. The steaks and all sorts of stuff in there. It's a really big restaurant, and I'm not sure how busy it actually is, but it gets pretty good reviews. I haven't been there yet. I'm sort of waiting to pick my moment actually to go there, but maybe I'll go in the near future. But it's probably one of those places that you're not gonna be disappointed with if you go there for a meal. And next door to Di Martina is this uh, Bottle Avenue bottle shop. If you're in town for a while and you wanna drink in your room, or you don't wanna drink down to the Warungs and stuff, that's a decent place to go and have a look uh, for beer, wine and spirits. You can get cheaper probably in town, but it's pretty conveniently located. And a little bit further along, we have the post office. This is Galandanao Postal Post Office. Post office these days in Indonesia doesn't really do much business. All that parcel traffic's been taken over by a lot of new startups. Uh, so, they're only relying. Look at these dudes. These are, these are cheeky rascals. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Up a kabar. Bye. But you know what? We love this little cheeky behaviour in Bali. Have a bit of a joke at other people's expense. It's all right. And that's the Gecko Coffee House. They do fantastic coffee. Not much else to say about it, really, except to say that that is a nice little place to come down and have a peaceful and quiet coffee. I love it. I love Gecko. Been there a few times. That brings us to Bonza Burger. This, that's a menu. It's a small little joint. I haven't been there, but I've read on the reviews that it's actually very well rated. So if you're into burgers, that's probably one to try out as well. It's quiet, but most of the places down here at the moment are quiet. What's interesting though, is that you're in, if you come down to this area, everything's really close to one another. You walk literally 20 meters and you're into the next restaurant or bar. Another 20 meters, you're into the next thing. So it's all really quite tightly packed because the road's only one and a half kilometers long anyway. And there's just a lot of stuff all packed in there. This brings us to Johoi Local Eats. I've got no idea how you're supposed to pronounce that because that's not an English word. J-H-O-I-I. -I. I've seen that on Google Maps as being rated very highly. I really don't know what their target is, what their food is, and that makes me a little bit Oh, it's not, not skeptical, but it hasn't sort of drawn me in there yet. But I've got a funny feeling it's very good, whatever it is they're serving up. I think it's healthy food from what I can see, but then I've seen donuts in there, so it couldn't be too healthy. Uh, that's probably something I want to try at some point as well. If you've got time and you're in the area and you're looking for something a little bit different, that might be something to check out. And if you have checked it out before, please let me know, because I've really want to know what that place is. We're actually getting pretty close to the end of the road now. You can see right in the distance, uh, that is the bypass. So this joins up to the bypass sort of on an angle right at the end. We're probably, I'd say 200 meters away from that now. And there's not a heap between here and there. There are a couple of places, but not a heap. This is Kabala. They have amazing ceramics and pottery that they make in house and you can buy it there. A really high level, high class. But the interesting thing is they also do workshops. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about pottery, this is a little activity you might be able to do while you're in town. And it's rated very highly. People really rave about that place. Strangely, Wadong Kania has a second outlet on the same road, perhaps, I don't know, less than a kilometer away. So that's, uh, probably I would say you're going to have the similar food to the first one and we find ourselves at Barbarossa. Barbarossa claims to be a pizza bistro and deli. They've got beer on tap, they've got wines there, fairly uh, international looking place. Susan tells me they've got stuff on the menu that sounds Spanish which confuses me a little bit so let's say uh, maybe it's an international restaurant. International. Again I've read that people enjoy that place, I haven't been there but again, another place that you might want to check out because I don't think it's going to disappoint. And that's the end of Jalan Danao Poso. That's the uh, bypass just there. I'm gonna scoot across before I get run over by this truck. But there's one little bonus option on here, which I think is pretty underrated, but I really like it. That place is Warung Bunana. Now, Warung Bunana, they're doing roti canai, which is not an Indonesian dish, it's more of a Malaysian thing. Roti canai, sort of a flake bread with all sorts of different toppings. You can get either uh, curries or you can get sweet toppings. They'll do te tarik, which is another sort of Malaysian dish. That place is really cheap, popular with the locals and really cool just for a, a light snack or a light lunch. I've been there a few times and I really like it. They freshly make that roti from, uh, from the dough. So they'll have a big ball of dough and they'll They'll smash it up and then and then put it on the um, on the grill or whatever it is on the hot plate and make you a roti chana. I really like it. So as you can see, Jalan Danao Porso is one of those streets which is quite interesting, but perhaps not as popular as the main road Jalan Danao Tumblingan, and definitely not as popular as the beach. It's a place that I like to come down to and stroll along every now and then to see what's new and what's emerging. And I highly recommend you do that as well because it's a nice compact street, one and a half kilometres, filled with lots of bars, restaurants and cafes. I've actually done quite a few of these videos over the past few months 
I've done the beach, I've done the beach at night, I've done uh, Jana, Jalan Danao Tumblingan, I've done Jalan Kamara and Sudamala, showing you exactly what the situation is in Sanua and what it's like. If you're staying in another area, what it's like in the other areas. So you might want to catch a cab into a different area and explore there as well. It's almost like a different town. So check those out. I've actually put links to those in the description below. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things Sanua. I'll catch you next time.